Hello everyone, this is Miss Sally. I hope you are doing well. This video is a summary for the important elements that we covered during this week. The Wright Brothers, the first successful airplane, 1903. Wilbur Wright was born on April 16, 1867 in Millville, Indiana, and Orville Wright was born on August 19, 1871 in Dayton, Ohio. Both brothers were pioneers credited with inventing the first airplane. In late 1901, the Wright brothers had gathered the aerodynamic data they needed to build a successful flying machine, and in 1902, the Wright brothers had built their latest glider based on this data. They had identified a wing shape that was efficient, producing the expected lift, and engineered controls that were responsive. The glider would also use a trailing rudder for yaw therefore enabling the Wright brothers to navigate in the air in all three dimensions. Following this success, the next stage for the brothers was powered flight. No manufacturers could provide an engine light enough and powerful enough for their needs, so the brothers had to design and build their own. The flyer was designed in a biplane configuration, with a wooden airframe and a wingspan of 12.3 meters, or 40 feet 4 inches. The pilot flew on his stomach on the lower wing, steering by moving a cradle attached to his hips. This cradle pulled wires which warped the wings and turned the rudder. The Wright Flyer 1, based on the previous glider, was set up near Kitty Hawk, North Carolina, in the United States of America on December 17, 1903, where there was a hill and a good breeze. The first flight lasted 12 seconds traveling 36 meters or 120 feet with Orville piloting. Three more flights were made on that day, with Wilbur achieving the best flight covering 255.6 meters or 852 feet in 59 seconds. The Wright brothers had made history with the first successful flight of a controllable, self-propelled, heavier-than-air machine. Over the next few years, the Wright brothers developed new flyers while remaining secretive in an attempt to secure patents and contracts. Now, let's know more about the elements of this story. First, to fly story. So, first, what is the genre for this story? The genre is nonfiction. Why it is nonfiction? Because a story involves real people and real events. That is why it is non-fiction. Is it fact or opinion? What do you think? Of course it is fact because as we said it involves real events and real people so it is fact. We have a true information. Who's the main characters in this story? We have Wilbur and Orville Wright, or we can say the Wright brothers. The setting for this story is the place and the time. Where and when does the story take place? The setting of this story is spring in 1900 uh, on the island of North Carolina. The plot. The plots mean the events in the story. So we have the beginning, the middle, and the end. The Wright brothers are trying to make a glider fly in the air. And in the middle, they made one flight only for se four seconds, but it is crashed. And at the end, they made a glider that flew in the air. They were the first people to fly. So, the plot is a literary term used to describe the events that make up a story, the main part of a story. Now, let's move to the conflict. Conflict in a story is the struggle between opposing forces. So, the brothers can't get the, gl uh, the glider to fly. Also, they crashed when it is in the air for four seconds. So, this is the problem. But, they solve it. They solve their, uh, this, uh, their situation and they finally got the glider to fly in the air. How can trail and errors lead to no inventions? If you keep trying to make errors and fix them, eventually it will work. 
how does the author organize the text? The words the author uses show that it is organized. The words are next, then, finally, and at first. The author uses the phrase quote into life in this story. Why does the author use this personification? So, the engine had a hard time starting. It did not start right away. And when it said quote into life, it means it finally started running. The theme, the theme is the lesson from the story. Uh, what we learned from the story if you are trying a couple times to make it better then you might achieve your goal so the theme here is to keep trying until you achieve your goal the boys tried different ways to fly the gliders in the air but they finally do it and they was the first per person who invented the airplane And the concluding, the right uh, boys flew the glider in the air without crashing. This is the end. We have six target vocabulary this week. It is from the story first to fly. Let's look. The first word is glider. Glider is a light aircraft that is designed to fly for a long period but without using an engine. For example, the glider was soon lost si sight of in the clouds. So this is a picture for the glider, a new glider. And the next word is incredible. Incredible means impossible to believe or hard to believe. His story is incredible in the literal sense of the word. It means uh, his story is hard to believe, impossible to believe. Supplies is make something needed or wanted, available to someone. For example, the school supplies books for the children. So, if you want to, to prepare your school supplies, for example, you have this picture. You have to prepare pencils, notebooks, sticky notes, sharpeners, erasers. And for example, if you want to discuss uh, food supplies, you can say tea, coffee, spoon, a cup. So supplies is something needed or wanted. Cockpit. A cockpit is a compartment for the pilot and sometimes also for the crew. It is in, in an aircraft or in a spacecraft. So. If you see from this picture, we have a special place for the pilot and for the crew. This place we call it cockpit. Scorching. What do we mean by scorching? Scorching means very hot. It was scorching and there wasn't a cloud in the sky. So it was very hot. Sheltered. It's a place protected from bad weather. For example, I picked a sheltered site for the tent. This could be a sheltered. That's it for our vocabulary. Let's now move to our grammar. Our topic in grammar for this week is future continuous tense. In this PowerPoint, we are going to know more about the future continuous tense. We are going to know about well and be going to and how and when we use them let's start so definition what we mean by future continuous we use future continuous to show a continued or ongoing action in the future for example i will be waiting for you tomorrow it is an ongoing action which will happen in the future the sentence formation whether the subject is singular or plural, rules remains the same. So, we add first the subject plus will plus be plus verb ing, then object. So, we have they, which is the subject, will be running tomorrow. So, they will be running tomorrow. Now, 
future continuous in positive. As I said, we add the subject plus will plus be plus verb ing. You can write it in two ways. You can write it I will in a separate words or you can combine them together I, uh, as this one. So this is th this is I will, you will, he will, she will, it will, you will, we will, they will. So both of the ways are correct. It's up to you. So for example, I can say I will be reading or she will be eating for example or you will be cooking now let's know more about will we use will to make a prediction or a statement about something will be true or will occur in the future the formula for will in the positive we put subject plus will plus be plus verb ing. So, the example here, you will be traveling to Paris next week. And in negative, we add not after will. So, we have the subject plus will plus not plus be plus verb ing. So, you will not be traveling to Paris next week. Interrogative means questions. Here in this situation, we just swipe up between the subject and will. So, will plus the subject plus be plus verb ing. And, of course, the question mark. Will you be traveling to Paris next week? Now, let's know more about be going to. We use be going to to express a prior plan or something that intended to do in the future. In positive statement, we put subject. Here you have to put verb to be. Am, is, or are. It depends about the subject. Going to, then, plus be, plus verb ing. So, the subject here is you. So, we choose are, because we have you. Then we put going to, be traveling to Paris next week. And in negative form, it's the same as well. We add not, but we add not after verb to be. So, we have subject plus to be plus not plus going to plus be plus verb ing. You are not going to be traveling to Paris next week. And for interrogative, for the question form, we use we swipe up between the subject and to be, verb to be. So it will become, are you going to be traveling to Paris next week? We put the verb to be first, then the subject, then going to, then be, then the verb ing, and of course, the question mark. Opinion writing for kids. Episode one, what is opinion writing? Your opinion is what you think or how you feel about something. People can have different opinions. Some people love pizza and some people hate pizza. That's their opinion. We can share our opinions with others by writing about them. When someone is talking or writing about their opinion, there are certain words you might hear. Opinions may start with I like or I believe or I think or you may hear other opinion words like the best or my favorite. So let's see if you can find the opinion. I love dogs because they are so cute. Or dogs have fur and tails. Which one is an opinion? Did you say this one? If so, you're right. It tells someone's feelings about dogs, not just facts. If you're ready to start brainstorming your own opinions, check out episode two. Episode two, choosing an opinion writing topic. Remember, your opinion is what you think or how you feel about something. When you brainstorm, you think of ideas. 
Today, I'm going to brainstorm some topics I could choose for my opinion writing. We know that opinions often use words such as like, believe, think, best, and favorite. One way to brainstorm opinions is to think of your favorite things. You might think about your favorite book or your favorite TV show, your favorite animal or your favorite sport, your favorite food, or really anything else that's important to you. It's best to choose a topic that you feel strongly about. That way, it will be easy to write your opinion because you really care about the topic. I'm going to write about my favorite book. Check out episode three to see. Episode three, making an opinion writing plan. I'm going to write about my favorite book, The Tale of Peter Rabbit by Beatrix Potter. To plan my writing, I will use a graphic organizer. I'll put my opinion in the middle and the four reasons around it. Reasons tell why you believe something. Here's my plan. My opinion is that The Tale of Peter Rabbit is a great book. Since this is just a plan, I don't have to write full sentences yet. I'll just put a few words to remind me of what I'm going to write later. Now I need to think of some reasons to support my opinion. I can ask myself, why is The Tale of Peter Rabbit a great book? Hmm, I really like the characters in the book. They're so cute. I'll add this reason to my organizer. Hmm, what else? Oh, parts of the book are really silly. I think I'll add that too. I also love the illustrations in the book. They are really pretty and colorful. I just need one more reason. I think this is also a great book because it can teach kids a lesson. There, my plan is complete, so I'm ready to start writing. Check out episode four, kids. Episode four, writing a draft, introduction. I'm writing my opinion about my favorite book, The Tale of Peter Rabbit. I made a plan for my writing, so now I'm ready to write my draft. I'll start with an introduction. An introduction is the very first part of your writing. Introductions should do a few important things. They should hook the reader, name the topic you are writing about, and tell your opinion. I'll start with a hook. I like to hook the reader with a question. Since The Tale of Peter Rabbit is about animals, I'll ask the reader, do you like books about animals? Now I need to name the topic, which is the title and author of the book. If so, you should read The Tale of Peter Rabbit by Beatrix Potter. Last, I need to tell my opinion. It is a really great book. That's it, my introduction is finished. Check out episode five to see Episode five, reasons and examples. I'm writing my opinion about my favorite book, The Tale of Peter Rabbit. I've written an introduction to start my draft, so now I'm ready to write reasons and examples to support my opinion. Reasons tell why you believe something. Examples support your reasons by giving evidence. Here's the plan for my writing. I've already thought of four reasons why I think this book is great. Now I need to write my reasons and sentences and add examples from the book. I'm going to start with my first reason, the characters. I think The Tale of Peter Rabbit is a great book because it has really cute characters. This sentence tells my reason. Now I will write an example from the book. For example, the little bunnies are named Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail, and Peter. They are fluffy and wear really cute clothes. Now I will write about my next reason. Also, parts of the story are really silly, like when Peter sneaks under the fence to get into the garden. On this page, I use linking words to connect my ideas, like because, for example, and, and also. 
Now I will write about my last two reasons. I also love the illustrations. The pictures in the book are really pretty and colorful. Last, kids can learn a lesson by reading this book. Peter learned that he should have listened to his mom to stay safe. I wrote about all four of my reasons and gave examples to support each one. Check out episode six to Episode six, writing a conclusion. I've been writing my opinion about my favorite book, The Tale of Peter Rabbit. I've written an introduction to name the topic and tell my opinion. I've written reasons to support my opinion. And I've written examples to prove my reasons. Now I'm ready to write a conclusion to end my writing. A conclusion is the last part of your writing. It should have three parts. First, restate your opinion. Next, summarize your reasons. And last, give the reader a final thought. I'm going to start by restating my opinion. Doesn't the tale of Peter Rabbit sound like a great book? Now, I will summarize my reasons. The characters are really cute. Parts of the book are so silly. The illustrations are pretty, and it can even teach you a lesson. Last, I'm going to leave the reader with a final thought. If this sounds like the type of book you might like, check it out at your local library. Yay, my draft is complete. Check out episode seven. To episode seven, revising your opinion writing. I've written my opinion about my favorite book, The Tale of Peter Rabbit. Now I'm ready to revise. Revising means making your writing even better. The first step is to reread your writing. Ask yourself, does it make sense? Did I use strong words? Did I give enough details? If you answer no to any of those questions, you should change your writing to make it better. Here is my introduction. First, I will reread it to see if it makes sense. Do you like books about animals? If so, you should read The Tale of Peter Rabbit by Beatrix Potter. It is a really great book. Hmm, it makes sense, but I think I'm going to change really great to fantastic. It is a fantastic book. That sounds so much better. I'm also thinking I should add more details about the book since the reader might not know anything about it. It is a story about a naughty rabbit named Peter who doesn't listen to his mom. He is supposed to gather blackberries with his siblings, but instead he sneaks into a garden and gets into a lot of trouble. Much better. Now let's reread the next page. I think The Tale of Peter Rabbit is a great book because it has cute characters. For example, the little bunnies are named Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail, and Peter. They are fluffy and wear really cute clothes. Also, parts of the story are silly, like when Peter sneaks under the fence to get into the garden. Hmm, I think I will change really cute to adorable. That is a much stronger word. Let's see what's next. I also love the illustrations. The pictures in the book are really pretty and colorful. Last, kids can learn a lesson by reading this book. Peter learned that he should have listened to his mom to stay safe. Can you think of a word I could use instead of really pretty? Hmm, I think I'll say beautiful instead. Here is my closing. I'll change the boring words I used into the new, stronger words I picked. Let's see how it sounds. Doesn't The Tale of Peter Rabbit sound like a fantastic book? The characters are adorable. Parts of the book are so silly. The illustrations are beautiful, and it can even teach you a lesson. If this sounds like the type of book you might like, check it out at your local library. Perfect! I'm almost finished. Check out episode eight to learn opinion writing for kids. Episode eight, editing your writing. Editing means fixing mistakes in your writing. You will check to make sure you have spaces between each word, correct capitalization, 
correct punctuation, and your best spelling. Let's start with my first page of writing. I will use a checklist to make sure I am checking each item on my list. This page says, Do you like books about animals? If so, you should read The Tale of Peter Rabbit by Beatrix Potter. It is a fantastic book. Let's see, do I have a space between each word? Hmm, check. Do I have capital letters in the correct places? Um, wait a minute. Titles of books should be capitalized. Much better. Check. Do I have correct punctuation? Check. Did I use my best spelling? Check. Now I'm ready to check the next page. It is a story about a naughty rabbit named Peter who doesn't listen to his mom. Let's see, I have spaces between my words. I used capital letters at the beginning of each sentence and at the beginning of Peter's name. Punctuation, hmm, wait, this sentence isn't a question. I meant to use a period. There we go. And I used my best spelling. Great, next page. He is supposed to gather blackberries with his siblings, but instead he sneaks into a garden and gets into a lot of trouble. I see spaces. I see capital letters where they belong. I see correct punctuation. My spelling, hmm. Wait, that's not how you spell with. It has a TH on the end. Perfect. I'm going to keep checking each page with my checklist until all of my writing is its very best. Thank you for watching this series. This video is about Wright Brothers, their first flight in 1903. This is the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you for listening and watching. Have a nice day.